Hello everyone! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning how to hold your base in no portal mode. Believe it or not, this can actually become quite a tricky science, let's say. So I'll teach you the basics first, and then we'll flush out more of how to do this properly and get the whole base all at once. You'll need to know a bit more than just putting carts in ships. You need to understand how the encumbered system works. You see, I've got all of this copper ore right here, around 120, and I can load myself up, but then I get encumbered, right? Here's two strategies for this. First, you can build a series of chests, and then all you do is put the heavy items in the beginning of the series, and then as you're encumbered, you can take an entire inventory, as long as you can make it up the terrain. But you'll find that sometimes, it's a little bit too steep, and then what happens? Well, you get stuck. And that's where you'd have to toss all of your stuff, and then jump up to the higher place, and pick it up, and then you can just dump everything in that chest, and then let your stamina recover. And as long as you have enough chests placed, you'll always have a chest to dump the heavy stuff into, and then just loot the metal and repeat the process until you get to your desired location. This is actually the most effective way in the game to move huge quantities of metal. It works even better than carts because carts get so bogged down that they can't move as easily as the encumbered character. And additionally, by using a lot of stamina food and these medium stamina meads, you can actually travel pretty far distances while being encumbered. I'll now show you two more tricks that are really important to holding goods and using the ship. To get off of the ship is a little bit special. You have to press E to use the ladder, but the moment after you do that, you hold back, and then you'll end up falling down the ladder. And what's interesting about being encumbered is once you start drowning, you can actually continue moving around. And this can be useful because it can allow you to get close enough to shore to then toss the metal. These two tricks are really important. They're gonna enable you to move around very heavy goods without as much headache as you're used to. The ship itself has quite a decent amount of storage space. But when it comes to hauling and building a whole base, uh, you're gonna need some more firepower. That's where the carts will come in. Carts actually have a weight, and it can vary greatly depending on what you put in it. The lighter items will only be around 200 pounds for a cart full. All stones and wood will be 1,800 pounds per cart. But then we have the metals, which are all in excess of 6,000 pounds per cart. So you can see that there is a huge variation between the lightweight carts and the heavyweight carts. It's approximately 30 of these lightweight carts equals the weight of one of these carts. But why am I telling you this? Because normally this doesn't matter. You just stuff it all in the ship and put it in your inventory, and as long as you're not encumbered, it's all good. So we're gonna take a cart full of silver, the heaviest metal in the game, a solid 7,500 pounds, and we're gonna put it in this boat. There we go, all right, we are on the boat. Oh, the boat immediately kiltered, look at that. You can see we're having a lot of problems already here, right? This is very, very heavy stuff. But watch this. We only have 1,000 something pounds in the hold, so what if we switch the hold with the storage silver? There we are, so now we have the storage, 1,000 pounds in the cart, and then the ship's hull has all of the weight. And now, the ship is still kiltering from the weight of this cart, but see how I can move the cart much more easily now? The cart full of metal becomes so heavy, it's really challenging to move it. But these lighter weight carts can be managed quite simply. So if you're ever having trouble, all you have to do is swap out the cart for something lighter, and then if you want to, you can put it back. But as a general rule of thumb, metal and your heaviest items should always go in the hold of the ship, because this area is pretty much unaffected. It doesn't mess up the ship. Whereas weight on the sides, especially thousands of pounds on the sides, you can actually sink your ship and flip it if you do it enough. 
So realistically, what are the limits for this sort of thing? And I can tell you that I've moved eight carts this way. You have to be careful, but it is absolutely possible. The most important thing that you need to understand is this can only be done alone. This is a very delicate procedure. And the second there is another player nearby the ship, it will cause absolute catastrophe. What'll happen is the location will be tiny bit different between each player for the cart, resulting in the cart vibrating, damaging the ship every second. And you can imagine how quickly a ship goes down when it has eight carts in it. You can do it on a multiplayer server totally fine. However, you have to do it alone. There cannot be any other players nearby. When somebody is really close to you, that's when, oof, it gets really bad. So again, most important lesson, don't do this with other people around. So now let's get into actually loading the carts onto the boat. There is a bit of a technique to do it properly, because each cart, especially the heavier ones, will cause the boat to sort of kilter. This is a pretty fancy setup for loading stuff, but it doesn't need to be anywhere near this fancy. You can just make any kind of surface like this, and have some stairs leading up to it, and then push the carts onto the boat. As you can see here, because I put the cart all the way in the back, it made the front of the ship go up a bunch. It's actually made the front of the boat come too far up, so I can't load the carts into it. After you load the first cart, you'll probably need to put it in a specific place because the ship is gonna move around based on where the cart is located. And depending on what kind of structure you're loading onto, you'll need the ship to be slightly lower than the surface where the cart is. Each time you add a cart, you'll need to readjust the ship because your movement will actually cause the ship to go further away from the dock. And then you'll end up accidentally dumping your cart into the ocean. So you can see that this is the ideal position to load the carts into. The ship is lower than the dock, which results in the carts falling down into the ship, but not flipping over. The heavy metal carts can be really challenging to maneuver, and you often end up getting stuck like this, where you're basically floating, hovering in place. And then you have to let go, and then sort of move it around without being attached. That usually works better. And as you saw earlier, you can always move metal into other carts to make the cart lighter so that you can move it around much more easily. Personally, I found that there is no best way to order the carts around, because every time you load the carts up, different kind of stuff's gonna happen. As you can see, this cart is so heavy that it basically got stuck behind these two seats, and now every time I try and use it, I just float up in the air. But this actually works out really well because it's centered and it's in the back, so I can counter it by just putting another heavy cart in the front. There we go, so now the boat is mostly oriented, but you can still see how much heavier this back cart full of iron is compared to this front cart full of basic resources, such as wood and stone. Personally, I recommend that you just stuff the hold with metal, and don't put any metal carts in the ship. They really make the ship go super slow, and it can become really taxing to get it anywhere. The ship even sinks lower into the water, causing it to get stuck in places you don't normally get stuck. So keep all of this in mind as you load your ship up. That being said, you can have as many carts as you want that are filled with lightweight resources like food and consumables, and as for the stone carts or the wood carts, these you can also have a decent amount of. You can have seven or eight of them, and it'll slow the ship down a lot, but it is manageable, and sometimes it's much better than doing a trip many, many times. But this way of doing things where I have the carts already loaded and then I push them onto the boat, it's really not ideal. It's much more challenging to do it this way. So let me show you a technique that makes this whole process much easier. You're also going to need to know what to do when the carts fall out of the boat. Whether you're just trying to load one up and it falls into the water, or if you leave the zone and come back, then don't be surprised when you load up the zone again next time and your carts are all over the place, strewn about. This is what will happen every time you log out. In fact, the easiest way to unload the ship 
is often to just leave it and come back and you'll find the carts in the water. And if that doesn't work, you can always just destroy the ship and then all of the carts will get conveniently dropped. There's actually a much easier way to get carts onto the ship. All you have to do is have your ship in place and then build some kind of wood ladder up to the top. Bring the resources to construct a cart, position the wheel of the cart on the top of the ladder, and it'll allow you to build the cart and then drop it down. This is called the flip technique because it'll result on the cart being upside down. This makes the cart hitbox a little bit more sticky and can better keep it in place. But for the most part, it's not really necessary. You can also get into the ship and then build these sort of brace things against some wood. And then if you clip a little platform right into the bottom by holding shift, this will allow you to place a cart into the ship. You can just delete the little jig and then the cart will be in the boat, not flipped over. It's all personal preference really, because you can just push the carts around if they're flipped over. The only thing is they're a bit inconvenient to access the storage, which can be a pain if you're in a pinch. When it comes to actually sailing these behemoths, you're gonna have to learn to do things a bit differently than what you're used to. And this is one of the reasons that you really shouldn't move metal around unless it's in the cargo hold, because moving the metal carts around as necessary to flatten the ship out is really challenging. Eventually, you'll get all the carts sort of into place and the ship will be back to normal. And it's gonna need to be like this in order to sail properly. Eventually, you will catch up with your speed, but you're really not gonna be going that fast. Unfortunately, this is about maximum speed for a boat that's loaded up this much. Which, to be clear, is 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, and around 11,000. The weight you're seeing this ship hold right now is around 11,000 pounds. And you can push it further than that, but you get to a point where the ship moves so slowly, it's slower than swimming speed. So I don't recommend that. That's why you usually want to put all your metal and your heaviest stuff in the ship's hold or the ship's storage that's built in. This weight won't slow you down. And really, you don't need that much metal for a new base. You can get the new metal at the new base. You only need a couple stacks of it. That's going to be far easier than holding around these incredibly heavy carts. They really cause a lot of problems. As you can see, you can get places with an 11,000 pound ship, but Unfortunately, it takes a long time, and the wind has to be at your back, otherwise you move at an absolute snail's pace. And uh, you do have to respect the weather. Your carts are going to get tossed about by the storm. What's pretty interesting about this is in single player, you're usually fine. What actually ends up happening is the carts get damaged enough to either destroy your boat or destroy the cart. But they usually don't fall off the ship. That being said, in multiplayer, uh, you're not gonna be that lucky. Never do this in multiplayer. Even if you're lucky and the carts don't vibrate the moment your friend gets on the ship, as soon as you get out into the ocean, the waves are gonna toss the carts off almost immediately. But when you're alone, you can see that the carts actually do a pretty decent job of staying stuck to the ship. Although they will slide around and this will inevitably cause the ship to kilter, which is then gonna screw everything up. This looks totally fine, right? Yeah, I'm totally, totally fine. Consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server at Zap Hosting using my link, JP Valheim. It's a fantastic way to keep your own Valheim world alive and to make the kind of experience that you want to have in Valheim. The Hilder's Request update really allowed us to customize the game and play more the way that we want to, and I've been having an absolute blast. Have fun, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye-bye!